Hey Mimos, how's it going? I was experimenting with some extreme tight close-up shots. <laughs> what do you think? It kind of kind of makes this look a lot more artsy, doesn't it? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so when we last met here, I straightened out my California map back here, but some people told me that apparently that other sign went and got knocked askew. I, I don't know how that happened. So I'm gonna straighten that one out and then all will be nice and even and orderly in my shop. And I don't have to break a hip this time because I don't have to crawl on my lumber rack. What do you think? Perfect. I hope you enjoyed the hose hanger project yesterday. That was a real fun one, I think. And the way that Peter did his as a large arc was actually how I was going to do mine. But since I made mine a little bit smaller, when I started to lay out just that lower part to make the arc, it didn't look like a good arc. It just looked like kind of a half of a hole <laughs> there. So it's, I decided to use more of just a wedge shape. But my idea was if I was going to make that arc, I would have painted it like a rainbow. I thought that would have been really cool. Got a lot of questions from people asking me about that router. And it's actually, I have three routers. I have my Porter cable router, which is in my router table. And I take it out if I have a lot of routing to do uh, to make a bunch of dados, say, in for cabinets, that sort of thing. But it's, it's easier just to leave that in there. But I have these two routers. This is the one I used, it's Rockwell. And I picked this up at a garage sale or an estate sale, something like that. Uh, a few years ago, and it, you know, it works really, it works really well, I think. <laughs> and it's it's lightweight and it's small. I like that. And then I have this one that I also picked up at a garage sale. I got both of these, I think, for like ten bucks a piece. But this is a Black and Decker one, and I don't use this a whole lot. It doesn't have much power. It's uh, it sounds kind of like a hair dryer when you run it, but it's super loud. So I, I don't use that one a whole lot. If you do have a router table, it's pretty handy to have a second router so you don't have to take the other one off the lift and everything. Oh, I got a gift this week from Brian Cox. He sent me this. This is a point driver because I guess he was tired of watching me just use Brad point nails in my picture frames to hold all of the artwork in. You know, I just kind of hit those on the side. This is a proper way of doing it and it See, it, sh <laughs> it shoots those, those little points in there so it holds all of your artwork down. See, it's those little things like that. So that was really cool. Thanks a lot, Brian. I'll definitely get a lot of use out of that and uh, I can't wait to try it out. Oh, it was pretty cool. I got a shout out on this week's podcast of on Tested.com. Tested.com is a website put together by uh, Adam Savage and Jamie Heineman of Mythbusters fame. And so they do these podcasts. Well, they don't. A couple other guys do it as part of that. But anyways, they mentioned mentioned my YouTube channel and that was, that was really cool. The Mythbusters do a lot of their testing right near me, like within a mile of me over on Hamilton. It's an old, well, they used to do a lot more of it, but now they're starting to build that up. Hamilton is an old Air Force base and they shut it down I don't know, 20 or 30 years ago. And they've had these huge hangars there that have been just empty for years. And so the Mythbusters would always come up there and just do all sorts of crazy tests in there and that sort of thing. But now they're they're building offices in those. Discovery Channel actually shoots a lot of things around here. A few years ago, they shot something called uh, I almost got away with it or something like that. It was a reality, it was a reenactment show of people who committed crimes and, and I guess almost got away with it. But they, it was funny because there was a house, two houses up from ours that was uh, being rented out and they rented it out so that they could just shoot these recreations of you know people getting murdered and, <laughs> and stuff. And, but it was funny because they would shoot just different parts of the house and then rearrange things just to make it look like it was a different house each time. But they would also shoot things out in the street because they'd have to shut down our street. They were fake police cars out there and they would race them up and down the street and then they would cut, cut, let's do it again, race it down the street. Cut, cut. They do, and they would just do it over and over again. And if you've never been on a movie set before or a TV set, there's usually maybe like 50 to 100 people. And here's what like 95% of them are doing. Or they always have a big catering table out there, and so they'll they'll eat. <laughs> Actually, there were a couple of episodes that had our house in the show, but I don't think a lot of people saw that show. <laughs> it would be so cool to get the Mythbusters to come up to Woodworking for Mere Mortals, wouldn't it? 
I'd love to have Jamie Heineman. <laughs> oh, I got more news. I think last week when I mentioned that I have Spanish subtitles on my videos now, which those are great. Yvonne is doing such a cool job and I've been hearing from so many people who said that his translations are just spot on and he gets them timed correctly and everything. And it got me to thinking that I really should put English translations in there too because that automatic translation, while it is more fun to read those at times, it's probably not as useful as a real, real captioning. So I've been going through my most recent videos and I've been adding English captions to those. I've heard from a couple of people who told me that their hearing isn't that good and rather than turn up the volume, they can just read those subtitles or, or people who just don't want to listen to me or maybe they don't want to listen to the music, I don't know. <laughs> Got a furniture project coming up this week. I'm trying to get started on it early because I think it's going to be a fairly large build and it's going to be a desk for my office. It's not going to be a regular desk. It's going to be a writing desk, which there seems something so very sophisticated about a writing desk. <laughs> uh, don't forget to post any questions that you have for Ask Mimo over on Twitter using hashtag Ask Mimo. I'm getting a lot of great questions on there and I think that's a fun segment to do on Mere Minutes. And some people have been asking me if they could just post their questions maybe on Facebook or something and I think that's okay but I'm not really sure how to to organize them. The thing about the, using the hashtag on Twitter is it's really easy because you use that and then I can just pull up all of the questions at once and I don't have to try to sort through all of my other Twitter messages, um, but I, I don't I don't have a problem if you want to post a question. I'm just not sure if I'll be able to see it or not. I don't know. Can you can you search hashtags on Facebook? I guess I should try. I know that Facebook started using hashtags fairly recently. And thanks for all of your feedback on the working with kids segment I did earlier in the week to get kids exposed to woodworking. You got to give them a quick and easy project to do because I think a lot of people approach it way too slowly and they want kids to practice sawing and there's nothing happening there and kids just have such a limited attention span that I think it's just best to just inspire the kids, let them make something really cool and maybe somewhere down the road they may get interested in woodworking. I don't think the idea with young kids is to get them to be woodworkers <laughs> at all because most of them frankly just don't care. Okay everybody, thanks for watching. Don't forget the other two segments this week, Ask Bimo and Mir Mini. I haven't shot my Mir Mini yet. I'm not really sure what it's going to be. <laughs> so, but anyways, I'll talk to you next uh, next week on Mir Minutes. See you then.